Children, welcome back to the geospatials. So, in this tutorial, we are going to be looking at geography. Now, you can recall in the last uh, video we learned geometry, and we also had a look at projections. We had learned that the Earth is projected from a 3D spheroid or kind of oblate spheroid structure to a flat Cartesian coordinate plane system. Now, in this kind of system that is geography, we are going to be looking at something different. Now, let's look at the difference between what geography is and what it's not. Geography is not Cartesian coordinates. It is spherical coordinates. So rather than representing it um, on a linear distance from an origin as plotted on a plane, we are describing the angular coordinates on a globe by specifying a point by the angle of rotation from the reference meridian, which is the longitude, and the angle from the equator, which is the latitude. Now, as you can see, there are two diagrams. On the, right, on the left, we have a Cartesian co uh, plane with points. And these points are represented in terms of x, y from an origin. Whereas on the right, we have a globe or a sphere whereby a point is represented by the reference from the meridian and also from the equator. Now, for the Cartesian coordinates, they're usually represented in terms of maybe a distance of maybe, let's say, um, 300 meters from X and 200 meters from Y. While in uh, spherical coordinates, they are represented in degrees. Let's say, for example, want to find the distance between two points on the Earth's surface, uh, point A and point B. And you are trying to find these points in, the, in their geographical rather than their geometrical nature. That is the spherical kind of nature. Picture um, an orange and you want to find the distance from one side of the orange to the other, right? If you are to use a geometry kind of uh, um, ST distance calculation, it will be like you are piercing through the orange directly to the other side. Let's see what I mean. I'm using GeoJSON IO and I'll be picking two points. We're going to be picking distance th this, uh, points that are far much apart. So um, I'll pick one point maybe in Kenya and then I'll pick another point in, let's say, India. Okay? So on the right, this panel, we see coordinates that are provided to us. So for the one in Kenya, it's that 7 point something, comma, 1.5. And in India, it's 78.75 and 22.5. So this is the longitude and the latitude. So this is how they are represented in degrees. Now let's try and measure the distance from Kenya to India using geometry kind of um of computation or function. So first, we'll select ST distance. And if you have watched one of my tutorials, you'll see I've explained ST distance. So you might be familiar with it. It calculates the distance from one point to another on the Earth's surface. So we're going to be reading our points as geometry from text. From text. And then we are going to specify one point and you are going to be giving it an EPSG of 4326. Now 4326 is a way of saying that your coordinates should be read in spherical kind of system rather than Cartesian kind of system. Remember in our previous tutorials we have been using 26. 918, which represents NAD, uh, 72 uh, projection system, which is Cartesian kind of coordinate system. But in this case, we are going to be working with spherical coordinate system. So it's 4326. Then you are going to have two points in our case, India and Kenya. And then within this, we will now specify these two points so paste there then you need to remove the comma 
and space it and in there. Mm -hmm. And paste it there. Now, when you run this, we see that we get a distance of 46.659 something, something, something. So, what do you think these uh, measurement units are for this? What's 46.65? Now, believe it or not, 46.65 is degrees measurement. And that does not make sense to us. Is an angular measurement. We need to have a kind of a more reasonable measurement or a meaningful distance. So to do that, what are we? We are supposed to treat our geographical coordinates as true spherical coordinates. Now this means we must measure the distance between points as true parts over the sphere. So rather than poking through an orange, you have to go around the sphere to reach the other side. So to do that, we have to change from ST geometry from text and use ST geography from text. Now, not the word geography. Let's try and run the query again and see our result. We'll just change this to geography as text. Ge geography from text. And then we don't need to specify the EPSG. And if we run this again, we get 5066308 as the distance in meters. So now we have a correct measurement. Now you might be asking yourself, we already have um, tables in our database and then geometry uh, format. How can we convert them? To geography format so since you have already loaded the spatial data and it's in ge geometry format the first step will be to project it to EPSG 4326 I had mentioned in my projections tutorial about transformations and you use the ST transform the geometry and the new SE that you want to transform it to so in our case it will be for 326 then next we cast it to geography format. Now casting it from geometry to geography is easy. You only use the geography uh, close with, and then enclose it with the geometry that has been projected or transformed. And then finally you have your geography data and its views will be stored in the geography uh, view. Let's try that. Now we have a table called NYC subway stations. And if you expand it and check on the columns, we have various columns. Now we we'll just extract maybe the name, the root, and the geom. And then use this table to create a new table that is in geography format. So create NIC subway stations. Let's call it jog. And then to make it straightforward rather than having to insert, we use us and then select. Now which uh, columns are we selecting? We are selecting the name. Sorry. We are also selecting the geom. And we are going to select the roots. And you are selecting this from NYC subway stations. And then we want this jump to be in geography format. So to do that, first we said we have to transform it using ST transform. And then you are giving it the geometry and 4326. And then we need to cast it. So to cast it, we use the geography function. So 
so that encloses the rest of this now if we run this sorry we are supposed to create a table then run this so if we run this we have successfully created a new table and if i refresh my table section i should see the new table appearing and i see substation substations geog now we can also check the values that appear in our um, subway stations so you can select select all from NIC subway stations jog we run this we see now we have instead of a geometry column we have the geography column now we are good to go next we can also create an index, a special index for the geography table and it's similar to creating a special index for the geometry table. What you do is create index and the table is called, so we are going to add the word index, so this is the name of the index, then on which table, that table, using Remember we had learned about creating indexes. Watch that tutorial for more information. So we are using gist and in our case the name of the column is geography. So if we run that we have a new index that will be created here. Here it is. Now if you want to check the geography columns they are found in the uh, geography columns views. To do that, just do a select all from geography columns. And if we run that, we we'll get these columns. So we have the table, PG Baby the schema it's public the table name it's the only table that has geography kind of uh, coordinate system is our uh, NIC subway stations geog and the s read is zero for now the geometry type is um a point okay now you can also create a geography table from scratch and it is similar to creating a geometry table. The only difference is that instead of specifying geometry type, you specify geography type. And also when you're inserting data, instead of specifying um, x, y values, you're specifying longitude, latitude values. Let's go ahead and try that and create a table called hospitals and then insert one or two hospitals into our table. Now to do that, we'll say create table and they are creating hospitals table and they are giving it the columns um, let's see a name which can be character varying so var char and it can have 20 characters and they are also giving it geometry but not geometry this time it's geography and this will be geography And then it will be a point. So um, if we run this, we have a new table that has been created. We refresh our tables. We see that we have the table called hospitals and it has two columns, virtual and geography. Now let's insert some data into our into our hospital table. So we're going to insert into hospitals and the values are going to be uh, the name which is hospital one and then the point the points coordinates which are just going to be zero zero 
I'm going to also insert again another hospital values will be hospital let's call it hospital 2 and the point we can say it's 1 1 and this is just an example so if we run this uh -huh. see get an error so if we run this you have inserted uh, two hospitals into our table if we check our values which can be done by select all from hospitals We see we have two hospitals and it's that easy now you might also be wondering you already have your geography table what about if you want to go back to the geometry kind of table or maybe whatever computation you are doing can only be supported by geometry functions rather than geography functions so to cast back to geometry postgres has provided the ability to do so by appending uh, the two columns and the type name to the end of the value you wish to cast. So for example, you can have a point and then uh, you cast it to geometry. So this point will be casted from geography to, po to geometry. Let's try and do this. So in PG Admin, we know that something like STX which checks the longitude of a point can only be computed on geometry kind of data, not geography data. So STX is used to determine the X value, which is usually the longitude in geography format. So to do that, we'll do ST, no select, and you're going to retrieve the name and also the geography. Now, we need to cast this to we need to cast this to um to a geogra to a geometry. So first we check st x and then since it does not check geography format, we cast it to geometry by adding the two um columns and the type which is now geometry. And we are going to just rename it as longitude from hospital stable if we run this we get the longitude for the first hospital is 0 and the second hospital is 1 good now after learning geography today you must be very excited about it and probably saying this is what you'll be using but I want to tell you why not to use geography so one reason is it has fewer functions that directly support the geography type. So you'll find yourself running back to geometry type in order to do some computations. Also, calculations on a sphere are computationally more expensive than Cartesian coordinates. So this simply um, explains why you should opt for using geometry over geography. But if your data is geographically compact, meaning it's within a geog small geographical area, then use the geometry type with a Cartesian project. But if you need to measure the distance within a data set that is geographically dispersed, then use the geography type. Now I hope you have learned something from this video. See you in the next video. Goodbye. And guys, if these tutorials are helpful to you in any way, consider subscribing to my channel. And don't forget to give this video a like. Bye.